Hello, my name is Alexander Kaplitz, and I'm going to be presenting on the online extraction of environmental pollutants from microplastics using SFE, SFC, MS. Now, microplastics are just small particles of plastic that have been degraded from the larger pieces of plastic that we use in our everyday lives. Now, when these larger pieces of plastics go and they're thrown out or recycled, sometimes they can enter the waterways, where then uh, as they get degraded into these microplastics, uh, small fish can eat these microplastics. Now, a concern is that environmentally persistent organic pollutants, or EPOPs, tend to adsorb to the microplastics. That means that when a fish eats the microplastic, it is also consuming these EPOPs. Now, a concern about EPOPs is that they're toxic to biological species, and they also are resistant to chemical, biological, and photolytic degradation. That means that once they, once they enter this uh, animal, they tend to stay in the animal for a long, long period of time. And then you can have a larger fish eat that fish, and then eventually humans eat that fish. And as they're consuming much more uh, fish, you tend to get a bioaccumulation and magnification uh, so that it can start having human health problems, kind of like with mercury with tuna fish. So one specific EPOP that we looked at is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Now these tend to form as a byproduct of the petroleum industry. And currently the EPA monitors 16 PAHs. So now that we have an understanding that there is a concern about these, we decided to use an online SFE, SFC, MS system, or supercritical fluid extraction, supercritical fluid chromatography, uh, mass spectrometry system. Now what's special about the SFE and SFC instrument is that it uses supercritical fluid or subcritical carbon dioxide, which is a greener analytical technique compared to the traditional methods while also being faster. As it is an online system, you can directly extract and then separate and then analyze all in one step, which greatly increases the speed and throughput that you can use when studying these uh, pH, these EPOPs. So how we created these microplastics is we took three types of plastic pellets um, containing PETE, HDPE, and LDPE, and we cryomilled them. When we examined these uh, cryomill plastics, we saw that they had rough properties, which is expected if you would have plastic that suffered mechanical degradation. We then took these plastics, put them in a mesh bag, then put that bag suspended into water, which we then spiked with the PAHs that we needed. We then shook this on a shake table for one, seven or 14 days, and then we spread it out to dry. We then put them into the vessels that could be extracted using SFE. Now, the methodology that we used was adapted from an earlier paper, which looked at uh, 16 PEHs extracted from soil. Once we adapt this methodology for the microplastics, we saw that out of the 16 PEHs that the EPA examined, we were able to look at 11 of them. Uh, and we were able to separate them, extract and separate them in about 25 minutes. When you look at the extraction amount of the PAHs, you saw that we saw that with PETE, we were able to get most of the PAHs off of the plastics relatively quickly. Now this has to do with the polarity of the PETE compared to the other plastics, as it is the other plastics tend to be more nonpolar and the carbon dioxide is a nonpolar. Um, mobile phase. We saw that LDPE was found to be more compound specific compared to the PETE, PETE and the HDPE, which means that certain compounds absorbed more to it than others. And we also saw that the HDPE uh, was able to extract a greater concentration of PAHs, which means that it was probably able to absorb a greater concentration of the PAHs. In the future, three types so microplastics will be exposed to marine water to examine the absorption of pHs directly from the water, and also additional EPOPs will be examined. Thank you for your time.